My next guest, one of the most recognizable faces in barbecue. You see him on TV in his restaurants, writing books, competition trail. This past weekend, you might have seen him in Memphis, Tennessee, winning not only the world title in pork shoulder, but added Memphis and May overall grand champ as well. His first overall MIM title, by the way. So let's go ahead and race to the Fogo Charcoal Hotline. And welcome back. The pitmaster of Cool Smoke Barbecue Hall of Famer, Tuffy Stone, joins me here on the show. Tuffy, how are you, buddy? Hey, Greg. I'm doing well. How are you? Absolutely fabulous. Probably not doing any better than you are, though, given the events of this past (laughs) weekend. No doubt about it. So did you spend all of the winnings that night that you put on Instagram? (laughs) <laughs> we tried we put a dent in it but we uh we we were we were all moving a little slow so we uh we went to bed early so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to spend some more time working on that so let's start with this past weekend Tuffy knocking down two world titles pork shoulder to get into the final and then overall world champ you certainly aren't new to this particular event that being Memphis in May and it's truly a one-of-a-kind competition so do you prepare for this particular event any differently than you would if you were going to a KCBS contest or a Houston contest or something other than a Memphis contest? Absolutely. Um, with Memphis in May, there's uh, a lot. I I have to bring a lot more equipment, so we have to we have to set up. Uh, we bring we rent tents and tables and chairs and flooring. Our, our our site's pretty modest in comparison to some of the uh, elaborate double deckers down there. But um, so we have to coordinate the rentals, and then it's a matter of we you have to present your. In this case, I'm cooking whole shoulder, so I've got to have enough pit capacity where I can show the judges a whole shoulder on my pit. But I need to have a second pit because I'm cooking eight shoulders, so there's wow. there's that to deal with. There's platters. There's linens and, and, and tables for the judges to s- sit at. So there's a lot of those kind of elements that are completely different uh, than when I go cook a, a Kansas City Barbecue Society contest or Houston Livestock Radio Show or something like that. Does your catering background help at all as far as getting that whole thing set up and acclimating yourself? Uh, absolutely. I think, honestly speaking, I think uh, my catering background has helped me uh, just in competition as a whole, because I'm, I'm so used to cooking in makeshift kitchens and having the elements to deal with. And, 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 and so I believe that's helped me uh, just not only from the uh, setup for the presentation of Memphis MA, but just as a cook as a whole, but, and then my wife, Leslie, she is so amazing. We, we create pack lists and, um, and work on, you know, we work on pulling this together for probably a couple of weeks and, and we have tubs and platters and toppers and, you know, you name it, napkins. And so the, the catering part certainly makes the presentation part of uh, Memphis Mail a, a lot more easy. From a pork shoulder standpoint, obviously you are uh, uh, affiliated with Smithfield. Uh, they obviously sponsor this show, so it's obviously Smithfield shoulders going on. Do you have a particular... I know they have a couple different lines of shoulders. Uh, which ones did you use, and what did you win with? Well, and so I, my, I'm a big fan of the the, the prime, which is uh, in the process of changing to a, a, an all natural line. But uh, it's not enhanced at all. All of the shoulders that I had, I cooked eight shoulders. They were all uh, 25 pounders, or thereabouts. They were really close to 25 pounds before. I, I did a little trim work to them. They were beautiful. The, the marbling in these these uh, Smithfield shoulders was was really really great. And and you know as well as I do when we're cooking long cooked meats like the, you know ribs or shoulders or uh, you know any big cuts, the more marbling that's in there, the better. And so I had I I was really happy with my product. It was about. From the, from the kill date to the date that I cooked it, it was about 13, 14 days old, uh, which is perfect for me. I, I like uh, I like my shoulders to 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 have aged that that amount of time before I cook on it. That's... And so, and I tell people all the time when I get to a contest, I come with sharp knives, uh, good wood, clean pit, fresh rubs, good sauce, and great meat, and, and just hoping that you have all the things. You can, hopefully you get there with all the things that you would need to uh, stand a chance in doing well. And, and, and these shoulders were just beautiful. 
have you come to learn that eight shoulders is what you need, or is that just what you're supposed to cook? No, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll, you need a, you need a whole shoulder for each on-site judge for the preliminary. So there's three. Um, you need. You, I I like to have options, so I I cook eight. I stagger cook two. Um, in hopes that we make finals, we'll, uh, if we don't make finals, we don't have any, any use for the, the, the two that we stagger cook. And I've, I've been fortunate and needed those shoulders. And I've also cooked those shoulders and not made finals. And, and then it's just becomes uh, food that you take home. But so I will typically have three for the preliminaries two choices for if we make finals. So that's five. And then I'll have three that I can potentially work, uh, work off of for, um, for the blind box. And, and sometimes I will get into just two for the blind box. Sometimes I'll, I'll get into three for the blind box. I've got lots of sayings, as you know, one of my sayings is it's better to be looking at it than looking for it. And so I like to have choices. Jamie made me a really beautiful double barrel, um, uh, uh, jambo, and that's a 30 inch diameter pipe on each side. And I'm able to comfortably put, oh, well, that's a tight squeeze, but I can put four nice whole shoulders on each side. So you end up finaling in shoulder along with your pal, Chris <laughs> Lilly of big Bob Gibson's, uh, no, uh, no news to you, but nobody's won Memphis and May more than that guy. Of course, it has to feel great to get over the hump and have a sniff at finals uh, instead of, you know, being a bridesmaid and shoulder again? You know, I was, uh, we, 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 every, every year we, there's always a, a bump in the road in your cook. And I, you know, another one of my sayings is it's all and how you handle catastrophes. And, you know, we had a couple of uh, situations that we had to sort through and our shoulders, we, we ended up having to push the heat up on them. Mm-hmm that morning and that's that's for me that's not the preferable way to cook a whole shoulder because where that joint is at the point and and the butt if it gets too hot it'll it'll pop on you and it doesn't make for a very nice presentation but we had to push the heat up on these and and kind of sort through that and then we we built a blind box i felt like that was uh i felt like that was pretty what's interesting is is my memphis ma presentation is not is uh is uh, composed or as fanciful as i would do for kansas city barbecue society so i always kind of like look at that box and say but it could be so much prettier <laughs> um but but i tone it down for that and so we did that and and my first my first preliminary on site i'm usually i tend to be a little clunky on the first one and then by the second and the third i get smoother and we did that, and then it was crazy. I had to drive across to West Memphis after that and, and pick up a trailer that I had purchased. Mm-hmm. And so we dealt with that. We came back across the river, and we were waiting, and we were waiting, and we were waiting, and it's a long wait. And all of a sudden, we hear the roar of the team of uh, Big Bob Gibsons because there's one spot between us and them. And, and they're cheering and it's energetic. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> they, they made finals. And, and I hope we made finals. And and one of the ambassadors there was so great. She got over to us like, you know, less than a minute later, we had made finals too. And anybody that knows me knows uh, I, I kind of get emotional with that stuff. So we were the team. We were all just, you know, very enthusiastic and, and happy to you know, make it finals. And and for me, making finals at Memphis in May, you know, I've, having started in KCBS and, and then, you know, eventually trying, you know, giving a go at, at uh, Memphis in May, um, I'm just, I'm happy if I get any kind of trophy, doesn't matter what size it is. And, uh, so making finals, you know, you could at least be third. <laughs> and I, you know, I was like, I, we got in the zone. We had a great, you know, everybody that was, uh, that was on the teams cooked with us in the past. And we, we did a much better job this year, Greg, of, of, of organizing responsibilities. And, and we just went into motion mm. and I was, I was kind of getting in the zone. I, I tell Sterling Ball this all the time. I, whenever I have a chance to win a, a world championship, uh, or did I win? To, to, whenever I have a chance to cook a world championship, I always just kind of like get in the zone and and try and just be, you know, trying to just have my best cook ever and and, and control the things that I can control. And so I was thinking about this presentation, 
and and just knowing how important it was going to be. In addition to the beautiful Smithfield shoulders, I, I had to be on point. And so they got there, and and it just flowed, and and and, and the team did great. And 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 when and, and here's something I didn't know, Greg. So we had to we had to be the first shoulder to be judged. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in KCBS, historically, back in the old days, you, we always wanted a high number on our box in KCBS. Because if you had a high number, they used to judge them numerically uh, in numerical order. And, and so if you had a high number, it was always a good chance that your food was going to be judged last. And that was the way we always wanted to be in KCBS. Right. And, and so when I was being judged first, I was like, oh, man, wow, this isn't good. But <laughs> I found out later that day that when you're ju- they judge so we had the best shoulder score going uh coming out of preliminaries and i didn't know that and that's why we were being judged first mm. but red hot smokers is an amazing shoulder cook and then w- like you said with chris Lilly, it goes without saying i mean he is he i have so much respect for him as a pit master he's and, and i actually he posted a picture or somebody posted a picture of his shoulder on instagram and i looked at that shoulder and i like my gosh that is one <laughs> beautiful shoulder <laughs> so so I was like, um, you know, I was just like, it's going to be tough for us to, 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 to take this. And, and we did, we, we, we did our best. And then off to awards, we, we eventually went and, uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was just a, an amazing day. Tough stone joining me, recapping the big win over at Memphis in May this past weekend. Uh, Tuffy, I've asked this question a number of times to folks that are in Memphis and May, and and they have that status. So, I mean, when you are who you are, TV exposure, successful author, uh, successful restaurateur, uh, few in barbecue rival your recognizability. So when it comes to the on-site judging portion of this, do you see your status as something that you need to overcome? Or do you see it as something that actually might give you an advantage to some degree? Well, I I, I have felt in years past that it it probably hurt me in a couple of situations. Um, uh, I had I've, I've had anyways. So I don't know. I did not I did not know the judges um, or the finals judges. And, and, and I had someone tell me that they were, um, they were they they were all, I knew they were all really experienced judges. Cause you know, you know, you know they don't have something that they wear that you know, makes you realize that they've been doing this for a while. But I was told that, uh, uh, that they were very experienced judges and, and I just, um, I, I just always go into my presentation, um, like, like I, I don't know. I just, I always just try and be very humble and very like, you don't know who I am, and 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 I'm going to introduce you to me and my team and where we're from, and how we cook this food that we're serving you, and 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 here's all my thoughts on my rub and my sauce and my pit and the selection of my pork and the wood that I use and why, and I just, I just kind of go through it that way. You know, the, at the end of the day, uh, just to get the finals, you got to win blind box. Yeah. If you don't win blind box, you're not you're not going anywhere. And you know, I think I've cooked I think I've cooked Memphis and May now nine times. I think I've made finals five times, and this is the first time that we ever won it. So, um, so to answer your question, uh, I don't know. I just uh, I don't. And I, and I I still feel like I'm a newbie in, in Memphis, May, to be honest with you. And it's like I've cooked it nine times, but you know, so many of my buds down there. I mean, Chris Lilly and Myron and Melissa and and, and Pat Burke and Mike mm-hmm. Mills and, and and this list is just so long. Uh, I mean, Pat Burke cooked his thirtieth straight Memphis <laughs> and May this weekend. I mean, thirty years. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. So I I don't. Uh, I, I don't think it helped. I don't think it helped me. And, and, you know, and, and my, what I know about all the judges that I get to talk to all the judges that I know and or, or have met, they're really focused on trying to, uh, award the best food, uh, that I, I what I love about Memphis and May is it is comparative judging and they can, they can really take their time 
and and and, and golly, the the point spread between uh, Cool Smoke and Big Bob Gibson's was so small. I mean, it was it was it was just it was so small. So I I feel really blessed that that uh we, that we got to uh to walk the stage and and then then when we were up there and we were getting ready to call brand i was greg i was i was tripping out i was like i was like man there's no way we're gonna win this thing there's no way and, and then they called us and 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 it was uh it was unbelievable but you know these the I, I said this on the stage there were so many of my mentors and and, and friends that are just tremendous pit masters, you know, and Chris Lilly, I mean, what he can, what he can pull out of a shoulder, uh, is just, he's brilliant. It's, he's just brilliant. And, and, and I don't know how many, I don't know how many of those trophies he has, Greg, but he's got a whole bunch of, Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, when you can get a shipment of pork shoulders frozen, and still end up winning Memphis, still win shoulder, and still win Memphis and Bay in the same year uh, overall. I mean, you're certainly doing something right, no doubt about it. And we're talking with Tuffy Stone, the 2019 Memphis and May overall world champ. All right, so uh, here's a quick list. If you aren't familiar with some of these, let me refresh your memory here, Tuffy. You've won the Jack three different times, 13 and then back-to-back 15 and 16. You won both sides of the American Royal, the Open in 14, and the Invitational side on 13. You won the 2015 Kingsford Invitational. You've also garnered the 2012 Gary Wells Sportsmanship of the Year Award. And, of course, I think kind of where we first met, the 2007 KCBS Team of the Year. Quite an esteemed, accomplished List that most pitmasters would be uh, highly sought after to accomplish during whatever cooking career they have. Do any of these stand out over and above the rest for any reason? Well, first of all, you can't see me right now, but my face is really red. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you um, won them, so I mean, you did it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to tell you um, the most. It was. Th- there's been so many amazing, beautiful things that I've been able to have uh, go through in, in, in competition barbecue and, 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 and every one of those things that you s- just mentioned has a story. And I got to do them with my father and friends. And, but if I had to pick one out of all those things that, that, that made me, uh, that touched my heart. Um, and it was so funny. It was so uneventful. One day I opened a package at work. And it was the Gary Wells uh, Sportsmanship Award. And there was no fanfare. There was no, it just came in the mail. And, and that really touched my heart a lot. So if I got to, if I got to pick one out of, of that, out of that amazing list that you just uh, read, uh, that that's the one that's most meaningful. Yeah. And you know what? That doesn't surprise me one bit. I mean, we, we, we've talked a lot over the years about winning this competition or that competition, but, I don't know if it largely just kind of to goes unnoticed or if you really got to start digging through what about Tuffy Stone or, or what have you won, and that one shows up. And as I was prepping for this interview, I'm like, man, I'm going to ask this question, but I guarantee it's really not the contest. It's getting recognized for being a great human being, and we all know what the Sportsmanship Award is all about. So um, uh, I figured that probably was going to be the one that uh, might stand <laughs> a little bit head and shoulders above the rest here. It was just such a funny moment. It was like, it touched me. And of course, you and everybody else probably know how emotional I get. But, you know, those little boxes came in the mail and I opened it up and there it was. And I just, I, I had a tear to the eye because it was, it was so sweet that people uh, felt that way. And, and so anyways, but it was, it was, you know, you know, you think about the Jack or the Royal or, or Memphis and May or all these things. And there's usually like lots of energy about the people and excitement. Here it was just this private moment of me at my desk. And it was, it was sweet. Uh, what does the rest of the 2019 schedule look like for competition? Well, so, you know, some of the things I've been doing this the last year or so, this really bringing me so much joy is I'm, I'm doing festivals where I'm cooking for people that I can see their faces when they eat it. And that's just mm-hmm. making me so happy. And I did South beach, uh, food and wine. I did Charleston wine and food. And, uh, I got to cook for the troops, uh, with stretch and the mess Lords. Uh, and that, you know, being a former jarhead that, uh, 
that that's been so meaningful for me. So I want to do more of those kinds of things. I did. Uh, I am, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking pictures. But I, I I finally got a porch trailer. I had to retire the RV. It had 175,000 barbecue miles on it, <laughs> and so I've got this porch trailer that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fix up and do some work on it. I'm gonna put uh, a Jambo and clothes model that I've had for a very long time on there. And I would have told you before Saturday that if I could cook, uh, anyways, uh, I'm uh, getting, you know, when in Memphis in May, I'm, I'm, I'm now an automatic for the Jack. So I get to go down to the, uh, you know, we get to go to the Royal, I mean, the Jack again, and I'm super excited about that. I am doing the Washington DC contest, which is a contest that I love. And I do some demos there. My dad enjoys doing competition barbecue so much that to, you know, he'll, he'll be 79 in December. And I think this, this new porch trailer, uh, hopefully will make it, um, uh, easier for him. So we'll, we'll pepper in some, some competition barbecue, but I'm really enjoying the, fe- Oh, I'm working, oh, I'm working on a restaurant. Uh, have a, <laughs> you're the first, you're the first, uh, uh, this is, I haven't talked about this with to, to any type of media or anything, but I'm working on a new restaurant, uh, with, with my wife and, and my partner, Josh, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. It's going to have a market and a restaurant. You're, you're the first Greg. So there you go. You heard it first on, on your show, but that's going to hopefully open in, uh, uh, just probably looking early fall now. So, uh, that's, that's, that's going to have some cool stuff going on. It's going to have a market with a little meat section in the back and we're going to have a wood burning grill and a wood burning oven. We're going to do some. Wow some fun stuff so anyways i'm i'm always i always got something that i'm working on man busy I can't thank you enough for having me on your show man it's like i just rehashing this with you me and everybody on the team i think we still feel like we're we're kind of in a dream uh and this didn't really happen so being being on your show kind of like Maybe maybe it did happen. Yeah, it's always good to relive it and then re-soak it in, let it soak in over the course of the week, and uh, it certainly will will feel like a, a nice new suit come uh, the beginning of next week, no doubt about it. And it's something that you can just put on the on the belt notch there, and and it's yours. You can't nobody can take it away. Now you got 2019 Memphis in May World Champion and Shoulder Champion to go along with it. It's Tuffy Stone, the pitmaster of Cool Smoke. Tuffy, really appreciate the time catching up and Greg. letting us into this whole uh, look back. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate all the things you do for barbecue, and thanks for having me again. You got it. There he is, Tuffy Stone. Your 2019 Memphis in May world champion, both overall and in shoulder. I mean, that's important. So remember, there are three world champions. 